Monday's breakfast on 4 here on 4 FM. Delighted to have uh, with me in studio this morning our special guest for a cup of coffee and a look through the papers. He's a medium and he's an accountant. What a great combination. Tom Colton, good morning. Morning, Gareth. How are you? I'm very, very well. Uh, I'm fascinated by the whole world of... Uh, mediums and mediumship. We're going to talk about that and, and uh, whatever it was, that life-changing moment that uh, made you, as it were, move to that level in yeah. a couple of moments. Okay. okay. It's great to have you in studio. Let's get, uh, just join Joan. Let's, uh, we'll take a look at the front page of the papers. The front page of the examiner is dominated by a photo of pilgrims making their way up Crow Patrick yesterday in very, very wet and blustery weather conditions. One of the main stories is that of prison staff in this country and the fact that they may face quarantine in their workplaces if there's a serious outbreak of swine flu in the country's jails. Yes, indeed, Gareth. Well, the Indo also has a photo of a father and his young son climbing Crow Patrick yesterday. But the main story on on the front page is the news that homeowners here are facing property tax and water charges as council tax spirals beyond €5 billion. Euro. Apparently local councils now owe €1,179 euro for every man, woman and child in this country. And the Irish Times leads with the story of the Leaving Certificate English exam earlier this year. It's hard to believe it's, it's almost two whole months now. Exam supervisor failed to follow mandatory procedures as the headline of the State Examinations Commission has condemned the actions of the exam superintendent who wrongly distributed a Leaving Cert English paper to students last June and failed to report the error to any authority. And also a story about Trinity College, which has sought planning permission to convert the ground floor of the former AIB bank in Foster Place off College Green into one of the city's largest pubs, over 14,000 square feet. There ain't no recession here. Tom Colton joins us this morning to take a look at the papers. Well-known medium and uh, well-known accountant. Um, it's a, a kind of a strange combination being a medium, does it benefit you, your accountancy practice? No, it doesn't. It's uh, <laughs> two completely separate things altogether. <laughs> when did it all happen? We'll, 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 we'll talk a little bit more, but I'm, I'm curious just before we get a look at some of the stories you've spotted this morning, Tom, wh when did you realise that you had it? My belief is everybody has the ability to communicate with spirit. It was when my uncle passed over to Spirit World in 2001 that I started to redevelop or reconnect my my own abilities with spirit. Um, my firm belief is everybody can do it and that's one of the reasons why we're doing the tour is to show people that everybody can actually connect with spirit. Do you see something in everyone you meet? Is it something that you have to switch on or is it something that's permanently engaged? It's something that's permanently there. It's just realising, one, how to connect, how the, how the spirit world connects with us, how they get messages to us, how they get signals to us that they are around and okay. it's understanding those signals is what people have to develop. You're sitting opposite me now in the studio. When you look at me, do you see anything? There's plenty around you. Plenty, plenty, yes. plenty, plenty of guidance and wisdom around you there already. Right. All right. Well, that's good. That's good. Now, okay, I'm going to have a couple of questions from uh, the gang outside in a couple of minutes, Tom. Just looking at some of the uh, the newspaper stories. Separate beds is the best way to get quality sleep. Yeah, doctors say that <laughs> more than a third of doctors recommend that people sleep apart. 82% uh, yeah. believe that people putting their health at risk by not getting enough sleep. Um, I don't have the problem with sleeping myself. Thank you, God. You, you sleep well, yeah? <laughs> yeah, good, good day to the pillow. Plenty, plenty of people standing around your bed looking after you anyway, that's for sure. Um, now, um, hundreds of women plan to tie their bras to the railings of Brian Cowan's Dublin office tomorrow. What's going on here? Um, women from the Sligo area are coming to Dublin to protest at the vital cancer services that have been moved from Sligo to Galway. Um, they say that there's a lot of inequality in the services that are offered around the country that people live in Dublin, there's four centres of excellence where you can go for the cancer treatments um, and within 45 minutes people can get there but I suppose there's enough strain and pressure on people in time when they're getting tested for cancer than to have to travel long distances. Okay, and uh, then uh, th let's we, we'll take one more story. I, I, I want to chat to you about uh, being a medium and that. Harry Patch dies at 111. This was, of course, the British World War One veteran. I was watching coverage of him over the weekend. Yeah, it... Um my family have a long history in the army. My great-grandfather, um, Edward Colton, would have served in Gallipoli and the Somme. So the story of here about Harry Patrick kind of rings home in the family. Yeah. Um, my, well, my, both my grandfathers would have been in the army. My father was in the army. Um, but yeah, my great-grandfather would have served in, 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 the, in the First World War. Mm -hmm. 
as indeed did uh, did my own. He, in fact, he, he fought in the Battle of Ypres, uh, which I know Harry Patch was was there for that as well. So, uh, rather poignant uh, news coverage on the TV over the weekend. The British World War One veteran Harry Patch dying at the age of 111, the only surviving member as he was uh, of all of those great soldiers who fought in that uh, big battle. Now, Tom Colton, medium. Um, clearly, you believe there is an afterlife. Yeah, that's my core belief system is that, that there is, uh, once the physical body passes, there is another place that we go. Um, what is it like? Different people have different thoughts around it. Uh, it seems to be, but the way I see it is like a, a, a Greek, um, Colosseum or Greek area where people go, if the hall of knowledge, you would reminisce or maybe look back at things you would have done here and things you may want to do in, in, in future lives when you reincarnate again. I, I are, are these souls, are, are they glad to have someone like yourself to pass messages back to, to, to as it were, communicate with people they, they know perhaps they, they've left behind? Um, well, as I said earlier, everybody has the ability to do it and it's really teaching people to do it. Um, but because I've developed my own ability that bit forward, I'm able to pass messages on which I love doing um, to, with people. Um, you know, it gives people comfort to know that the loved ones are around um, and that they do want to communicate with us, and Spirit World do want to communicate with us. Yeah. It, it is a very moving moment, I know, that when you pick on a member of the audience and you can actually, as it were, identify the individual right down to their looks, to their habits, to their laugh, to their cry. Um, it, it, it is a, it's a powerful gift, isn't it? Uh, I don't really like to use the word gift. gift. It, okay. it, it's, it's, it's an ability. Yeah. Um, I prefer to use the word ability because, as I said, everybody has it. But... Yeah, it is. It's, it's that moment where you can touch someone else's soul from someone who's passed and, as you said, down to the information of their personality, things they may have done, conditions mm-hmm. they may have had before they passed, things like that that can come true. And Spirit World come true with evidence to prove right. that it is them more so than, well, here's the six lotto numbers and, you know, things like that. It's not, that's not what they're here to communicate. They're here to communicate that they are still around and acknowledge things that may be going on in people's lives. Okay, Aoife, my producer, she's uh, she's almost ready to pop. She's actually, this is her last week before she heads off on maternity leave. The, the, the baby, can you tell us anything about the baby? We all feel that the baby is part of the family here now, you know. But then she goes, when I walked in, um, I'm generally 99.9% good on, on my predictions on, on children. I feel it's a little Colleen. Oh, a little girl. Oh, right, okay, right. Uh, and uh, Re- Rebecca, uh, she's hoping eventually to set up her own bakery business. Do you think it'll be a good success? I'll swap some recipes with her and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, and uh, can you predict our first ratings for the breakfast show? They're due out in three weeks' time. <laughs> Is that a brave question or what? Oh, I'm sure they'll be good, Gareth. I'm sure they'll be good. That's good. Okay, you're going to go a million, Tom. That's great. We're, we're delighted to hear that. Listen, tell us about the tour. Yeah, the tour starts this uh, Thursday in Cavan. Uh, we, and we go to Cavan Crystal this Thursday. Yeah. Nace then on the 11th of August. And then we're straight into it from the 1st of September all the way through to Christmas. We have special events around Christmas in different parts of the country. We're doing a Christmas with Spirit, which is a nice time to reconnect with those who've who've passed. Um, various locations, check out the website, tomcolton.com. Mm. Is, is Christmas a special time for for Spirits? Do they feel it as strongly as we feel it? Um, uh, yeah, as, well, they like to communicate all the time, yeah. but it's more so when people at it's Christmas time like to get together and just like to, to, yeah. to connect with family and friends again. It's, it's a good time to, to do it. Well, keep up the good work, Tom. It's great to chat to you. Great. Thanks, Gareth. Thanks Talk to you me. real soon and good Thank luck you. on the tour. I, no doubt it's going to be a huge sellout. Tom Colton, uh, medium there.